Meanwhile, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has praised the peace treaty between Ethiopia and Eritrea as historic. The two nations recently re-established diplomatic ties. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali and Eritrean President Isaias Afweki signed a peace accord in Saudi Arabia on Sunday. The terms of the agreement are not clear, but it's understood to be an extension of the Declaration of Friendship inked in July. The signing ceremony was overseen by King Salman and Guterres. Uh, the leaders of Ethiopia and the leaders of Eritrea have managed to overcome the conflict and reach this historic solution, which we hope will contribute to the security and stability of the Red Sea region and will open the way for more cooperation, trade and investment, which will serve all the inhabitants of this sensitive region of the world. The signature of the peace agreement between the president of Eritrea and the prime minister of Ethiopia is indeed an historic event. We have seen a conflict that has lasted for decades, ending, and uh, that has a very important meaning in a world where we see, unfortunately, so many conflicts uh, multiplying and lasting forever. Well, let's get you the latest on what's happening on the ground in Ethiopia. Uh, Giram Chala is there for us. Giram, uh, there are reports of massive protests in Addis Ababa in reaction to the ethnic killings that have claimed 23 lives. Can you confirm this? Well, good evening, Karen. Uh, indeed, uh, there were uh, protests uh, during the day uh, here in Addis Ababa. People in the thousands were uh, across the streets of uh, the capital city. They went to the palace. They went to the Moscow Square, one of the important arenas for this kinds of events. And also the broadcasting centers, state-owned uh, broadcasting centers, were also destinations of uh, uh, the protesters. They were mainly calling for uh, a rule of law and for those perpetrators to uh, face uh, justice. Uh, by the way, so far... According to police uh, reports, latest police reports, more than 25 people were killed during the weekend's uh, ethnic-based uh, violence. And uh, also out of this uh, protest uh, held today, uh, so, uh, there were about five people who lost uh, their lives because of their confrontation with security forces. So this is entirely uh, what happened uh, here in Ethiopia. And Giram, what has been the government's response to the tensions running high since the outbreak of violence there? Well, well Karen, there are two types of report responses from the government side. One is uh, securing uh, places where violence erupted, uh, places like Burayu uh, and the outskirts of some parts of the outskirts of uh, Addis Sababa where people were uh, targetedly killed. Um, the government's uh, response when it comes to security uh, was uh, to arrest those people who are behind this. Uh, and so far, uh, about 500 plus people were uh, arrested by police. This is a huge number. Uh, the police, uh, the federal police uh, uh, head was uh, talking earlier and he was mentioning that these were people who were organized criminals behind all the activities and the killings and the the rep and uh, the lootings around uh, uh, Addis Ababa. So, so far, arrests have been made. So, you know, beefing up security is one thing that the government has been doing and calming situations and tensions down. The other one is working with communities and societies around, or also with opposition political leaders, to in order to calm people down so that uh, further escalation of violence can be avoided. So, so far, so good. We, we understand that uh, things are now coming down. Okay, thank you very much for that update. That was Giram Chala for us there on the latest, the violence there uh, just outside Addis Ababa in Ethiopia.